those who lived to tell the tale remembered that the day began with fragile, breathtaking beauty. The temperature was cool in the low 50s. The air, mountain pure even downtown. It was a day unreal enough to serve as a setting for the birth of the world, or the death of it. Dr. Morton. Good morning, Dr. Dr. Conway wants to see you right away. Well, isn't this his day off? Spent the night working on his pressure photometer. Oh, not again. Mm -hmm. The way he's going, he'll drive himself right into the ground. I'm going to have to put a stop to this. You say he's already left, Mrs. Martin? What time is that? It was such a nice day, I took the long way through the canyon. Thank you, Mrs. Martin. He just stepped in. And a little concerned about you, Buster. How many nights in a row are you going to put in on that pressure photometer? Ellis. I finished. You finished? Why, that's wonderful. Pick something up. You mean it's already predicted an earthquake? See for yourself. About an hour ago, it began to register like that. 32 units? Well, there must be a short in something. You check every piece of equipment a dozen times. You're picking up another impulse, then. No, not even the impulse of an atomic bomb would register that high. There's an earthquake brewing, Ellis. A big one. Have you computed where it'll hit? About 50 miles north of here. When? Within the next 24 hours, I'd say. Hutch, have a private plane for Dr. Conway and me ready to take off for the state capitol in 20 minutes. We've got to hurry. All right. I respect your opinion. But do you realize what you're asking? You want me to evacuate close to a million people. But, Governor, they're living in a disaster zone. According to your device. Governor, you have a barometer here which can predict a storm. It does so by measuring the air pressure. Why isn't it just as possible to measure the pressures in the Earth? That's what an earthquake is, you know. Rock formations being shifted by tremendous pressure. If it had at least predicted an earthquake before... It wasn't ready before. It is now. I don't know that. Now, look at it from my point of view. I order an evacuation. Close the shops, shut down industry at a tremendous cost. Call in the army to prevent looting. On top of that, risk a panic. What happens then if it turns out that you're wrong? What happens if it turns out we're right? Gentlemen, I can only promise this. I'll alert the Disaster Council. In case of a quake, they'll be ready to go into immediate action. Well, thank you for listening to us, Governor Cheney. I just don't have any other choice. I know what it would mean to the world if your meter was right, the damage you could prevent in the future, the countless lives you could save. But for our sake, the people in this area I hope with all my strength you've made this journey for nothing. Thank you, Governor Cheney. Goodbye, Governor. Goodbye. How did it go? It didn't. Any sign of a rumble yet? Nothing registered on the seismograph. Once those lines began to jump, a million people faced possible death. Of course, you really can't blame the Governor. If I were in his shoes, I don't think I would have ordered an evacuation either. Not on the say-so of some unproven instrument. I've got some coffee brewing. Thanks, Hutch. I'm going down to the basement and check the ground connections on the photometer again. Maybe there is a short after all. How about you, Doctor? Well, thank you. Could be a long night without some fortification. Staying here all night? Now, Dr. Conway and I are keeping watch. If there is an earthquake, we'll be right on hand to measure it. Mm, you could probably use me then. Now, Hutch, at five o'clock, you'll just run along. We don't expect you to give us your life's blood. I'm young and strong. I can spare it. Besides, I might not be here after tomorrow. Better use me while you can. What do you mean you may be gone after tomorrow? By then you'll know if the pressure photometer really works. If it does, I can leave without being missed. You mean you're quitting us? 
Well, a girl can't work all her life. Well, Hutch, you're, you're the most able assistant we've ever had, wife. We'd be lost without you. Oh, nonsense. Anderson can replace me beautifully. But what is it? Do you want more money? Perhaps I can no, speak to... No, it isn't that. Well, then what? Well, I... I'm uh, planning to get married. Married? It's about time, isn't it? To, uh... Brad? Who else? Well, of course, I know you've been seeing him for quite a while, but I just never thought it would happen. It happened. Well, Hutch, you know, I wish the very best for you. Thank you. Only, uh... Only what? Hutch, I think you've given up too soon. I don't know what you mean. Dr. Conway isn't made of stone. He's just absorbed in his work. Sooner or later, a bell will ring, and he'll be startled to learn that he's in love with you. Dr. Morton... Just I... give him a little more time. Time isn't going to make any difference. All Dr. Conway knows or cares about is his work. A wife, a family, they just get in his way. Tie him down. Strangle him. Did uh, he say that himself? He would, if he ever took time to analyze his thoughts. But his thinking can change like that. If he hasn't noticed me by now, he's not going to. And you're willing to... Settle for a second best. Happiness is a matter of degree. Nobody can expect it all. Besides, Brad is pretty wonderful. You know, I had the idea that a scientist was never satisfied until he had achieved the ultimate. I am a scientist, I guess. But I'm a woman, too. And I don't want to wind up with just a dream and a hope chest. Your coffee's getting cold. with such force. was heavy along the railroads, littered with the wrecks of cracked streamliners and fast freights. Great refineries were enveloped in the smoke and flame of their own products. Fire scourged the stricken area from the mountains to the sea. The giant Tembler had not caught the Southland entirely unprepared. In accordance with the plan drawn up the day before by the governor and the disaster council, the armed forces aided the police, while civilians began searching the ruins for possible survivors. What escaped their notice in the grim task was that the axis of the earth had shifted three degrees. Touch, I know I'm interfering with your marriage plans, but something important has happened and I need your help. No, not tomorrow, right away. I'm leaving for the state capitol in 15 minutes, and I want you along. Thanks, Hutch. And don't spare the horses. You'll have to turn back. This is a danger zone. Our authorization. Follow me, Dr. Conway. Now, 
Conway. Conway. Until the meeting breaks. You may be a public Hey, it's not Conway, Conway, the guy that oh, predicted huh? the earthquake. I'm not a doctor. Dr. Conway, how about an interview? Sorry, can't talk now. We gotta have it now. Hey, Hey, now. I blame myself for the disaster. I should have ordered an evacuation. Dr. Conway. Sorry to break in this way, but I have something of the greatest importance to report. Go ahead. This quake we've just had, I'm afraid it's only a taste of what's to come. We're having another one? Of almost twice the intensity, unless my meter is wrong. Good heavens. There'll also be quakes in Europe and Canada. And several others, which luckily will be out at sea. We've got to report this to Washington. Dr. Martin has already left for Washington. He'll be meeting with the Secretary of Defense tonight. How much time do we have? Three, maybe four days. But the worst part of it is, there may be more quakes following. More quakes? What's happening? We don't know. Except that it looks like something in the Earth is expanding. Creating enough force to literally tilt the surface. Look up at the chandelier. Line it up with the wall. You'll see that it's hanging on a slight angle. The ground beneath is tilted. Nearly three degrees. It should have settled, but pressure won't let it. It's as if a cake of yeast were always there, pushing the crust up. Is there anything we can do? Nothing, until we find out the cause. If we don't, and that pressure keeps increasing, there will be explosions powerful enough to reduce this planet to dust. Well, Dr. Conway, any funds you need are at your disposal. Thank you, Governor. We're planning on going down into the Carlsbad Caverns with our equipment. That may take a good deal of money. Why the caverns? We want to get as deep into the earth as we can. The closer we get to the source of the pressure, the better chance we have of determining what it is. Well, let's hope so. We'd better do more than hope, gentlemen. We'd better pray. Scientists in every part of the world work desperately to learn more about the cataclysmic force. A brotherhood had sprung up bridged by radio, cable, and telephone and centering around the unofficial headquarters at Carlsbad Caverns. This is the largest chamber in the caverns. It's called the Big Room. Not a very imaginative name, but to the point. Where the deep hits. Quite a ways. It's the lowest level, about, oh, 1,300 feet down. That's called the jumping off place. Let's jump. the public's allowed to come. How deep is the pit? Oh, about 90 feet. Is it very wet? Well, normally there's several feet of water in the pit, but we pump most of it out. The temperature is 56 degrees the year around, so we connected a small heater to take the chill off. I thought you'd especially appreciate that, Miss Hutchison. Hutch, it's not terribly flattering, but uh, I've grown accustomed to it by now. We uh, had quite a time lowering your gear. You'll find it in good condition. Thanks. I'll check the intercom. Hello? Hello? You can descend any time you like. Dave, I'm putting you in charge. What for? Oh, I'm not trying to evade the responsibility, but there's too much at stake. And it's important that the best man be in the driver's seat. Alice, I... Now, we haven't got time to argue. Who goes down first? Hutch and I. We're working shifts. You get some rest, Ellis. Until I call for you. Put this on your belt. All right. Fasten this on your belt. Good luck, Dave. Carry a little. I'll be all right. How's he doing? You'll make it.
Hello up there. Hello yourself. How is it? Great. For claustrophobia. How's she doing? Okay. So far, the horse is still ahead of her. on him, probably. You down, didn't it? Sure, but you're too valuable to lose. My legs are shaking. Do you mind? Sit down a minute. No, I'm all right. No, no, no. Come on, sit down. Hello, Ellis. She made it all right. Start unpacking. Where'd you get that stuff about my mom and daddy? We're all little children and we're scared, aren't we? I felt about three feet high myself. You? Uh, not coming down the ladder. When I got here, how and where do you begin to stop an earthquake? I know what you mean. Yet people are depending on us to do that very thing. It's almost as if the earth were striking back at us for the way we robbed her of her natural resources. Not very scientific, is it?
Dave, we just had a phone report. Southern California was hit again an hour ago and... Was the area tilted any further? Another four degrees. We'd better get busy right away. Ask one of the rangers to come down and lend us some muscle. Kirk's on his way down now. Boy, it's sure something about all these earthquakes. It's only the beginning. And it was just the beginning. Eight hours later, three towns outside of Istanbul and Turkey suffered quakes that reduced them to rubble and created armies of refugees. A town in Canada crumbled next. The death toll was high. Cheney, General Bartus, Admiral Stalker. I'm at your service, Governor. No, thank you. This is Mr. Carson, our district civil defense chief. How do you do? Gentlemen, the Secretary of Defense ordered us out here to coordinate our forces with your council. You haven't come any too soon. Another tilt has just been reported. Much damage? Fortunately, not much. That area has very few people. Has Dr. Conway's group sent any more information? No, they've just finished setting up his equipment at Carlsbad. In the meanwhile, we're perfecting our master plan. Naturally, everything is on a standby basis. The pump went dead. I'll get it. Hey, you two, get a load of this. There's not supposed to be anything down here but limestone. Definitely of igneous origin, not a calcite. Couldn't be granite or basalt. So, maybe it's Kirkite, to be named after its discoverer, you. I'm just a rock hound. But I'm going to take this thing home and have a look at it, add it to my collection. Let me have that bottle. Sure. Time for me to take over. Well, at least you better wait until Kirk gets up. Then come on down. It's okay. Right. See you two later. Okay, Kirk. Hey, the fuse quartz is glowing again. Another unit of added pressure already. What's the temperature? Two degrees, four points higher. Could be an accident. Or could definitely be associated with the pressure. If it's not an accident, then we're fairly close to the source of the pressure. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Fairly close to it. Nothing down there but dust. Even the rocks are disintegrated. The search parties have given up until dawn, sir. They haven't found a trace of Kirk's body. What I can't figure out is why Kirk did a thing like this. He was too sensible to have dynamite or TNT in his quarters. Nitro and trinitro produce fragments of solid matter. It took something more powerful to produce this. Poor man. Better try and get some rest. You can take the morning ship. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Hutch. Good morning. More pressure? 
No, but we've located the source. It's in this area someplace, right near the surface. Temperature's gone up also. I was about to make that comment. I don't see anything in here that could produce that kind of pressure. Unless we're sitting right on top of an oil dome. Could be. I'll take some seismograph tests. In the meantime, you'd better go up and get some rest. You've been at it for 12 hours. All right. Let me know right away if you find anything. Right. You, uh, didn't sleep last night, did you? How do you know? One of the rangers said he saw you walking around. I couldn't get Kirk off my mind. The last time we saw him, he was so happy. And all because he found some unusual rocks. Yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Hundreds of people were killed in that last quake. Yet, death is only a statistic until it strikes somebody you know. Those rocks were unusual, weren't they? Hutch, I've seen a lot of rocks in my time, but this one is completely foreign. Something new, Dave? An unknown mineral, perhaps? Couldn't have come from above, so it must be an intrusion from below. Feel it. It's heavy. Yeah, a lot of mass compressed in that little chunk. So much that it has me wondering. You think it might be causing the pressure? I don't know. But we can assume an unknown mineral has unknown properties. Let's see how it stands up under a pair of pliers. No marks. The hardness seems to correspond with the density. Why don't you run an assay on it when you go up? Yeah, I will. Hear from any of the other scientists? Yes, they're just as stumped as we are. What about Fuji, who was experimenting with man-made quakes? Nothing. All he knows is that when pressure, artificial or otherwise, is applied to a fault, a quake will result. What about Brad? Hear anything from him? Yes. Sorry to ruin your wedding plans. It couldn't be helped. Look! Let's get out of here! Oh, Dave! Dave! Are you all right? Dave! Dave! Are you all right? Yes, Ellis. Everything's under control now. Well, what happened? We just had a demonstration. Of what killed Kirk? I'm coming right down. What made it so hot down here? If you think this is hot, you should have been down here ten minutes ago. Well, what happened? We found out what was producing that pressure down here. Not an oil dome. Those rocks. Or maybe we better call them element 112. Element 112? There are 111 known elements. That has to be the 112. Better not handle it that way. The mineral is safe when wet, but has some peculiar properties when dry. What properties? A tendency to expand and get very hot. And then to explode. That's what killed Kirk. He was a rock hunter. And he took one of those back to his cabin. And that's what's causing those earthquakes, too. Element 112 must be buried everywhere in the Earth. For some reason, it's pushing itself to the surface. We'd better run some tests on it and find out why it behaves the way it does. And then you'd better hightail it to Washington. We'll take 12-hour shifts watching the pressure photometer. You'll be down here all alone. So? And you're the girl who got the willies the first time she came down a ladder. <laughs> Dr. Conway. Oh, yes, Doctor. Would you wait a minute, please? Well, Mr. Secretary, Dr. Conway is here whenever you wish to see him. Send him right in. I'll go right on in, Doctor. Thank you. Well, 
That sounds incredible. A new element. I know, Mr. Secretary. Well, what do you want to do? Call a meeting of every top scientist in the world. That may not be so simple. Why not? Getting those scientists here from all over the world involves passports and a number of diplomatic problems. Mr. Secretary, we're faced with the greatest emergency man has ever known. Red tape is something we just can't afford right now. If I can get you the green light, I remember I said if, where do you want to hold this session? On some military reservation. The more restricted, the better. All right. I can get you the Smoke Ridge Proving Ground. That's not very far from the Carlsbad Caverns. Perfect. Thank you. Remember, Conway, I said if. I'll call you at your hotel. Right. you on this new element. No doubt you're anxious to have a look at it. Oh, you may step as close as you please, gentlemen. The demonstration will be carefully controlled. I am now going to ask the noted mineralogist, Professor Hagstrom of Stanley University, if he will kindly examine this specimen. It is warm. Now, hold it a second longer. It's getting hot. Well, place it on the table, please. Now, watch it carefully, gentlemen. The first stage is almost due. It grows. It doubles in size and increases in temperature correspondingly. What's the explanation? Element 112 is adding to its mass by combining with nitrogen in the air, thus becoming a nitrogen compound, like gun cotton. TNT, dynamite. You mean it's an explosive? With an expanding power capable of tilting anything, including the Earth. Positively yeah. astounding. <laughs> Eventually capable of blowing the Earth to pieces. Tell me, sir, aren't we risking an explosion now? It reaches the temperature of melting steel, two stages before the explosion point. Don't be alarmed, gentlemen. The process you have just witnessed is reversed in water. Hydrogen controls element 112 and eventually absorbs it. I wouldn't have to leave. Amazing. That's the reason this element hasn't been discovered previously. It destroys itself by explosion or slow attrition in water. Now, gentlemen, for the second part of our demonstration. If you'll follow me, please. Corporal, will you seal that tank? <laughs> Now, gentlemen, what I propose to show you is the explosive properties of element 112. Now, consider this is our world hanging free in outer space. Observe what happens when I deposit a small specimen of 112. Well, not from here, of course. We'll have a safe, unobstructed view from our observation point. After you've witnessed this demonstration, each of you will be given full instructions and a sample of E-112 to be taken back to your countries. There you will report to your chiefs of state and hold emergency meetings like this one, or your disaster councils and committees of public safety. These meetings will all be held on the same day, so that no region will feel that it was warned earlier or later than any other region. Ten seconds. Get ready, gentlemen. Brace yourselves. This is it. You 
certainly proved your point. Is there no way to control this element? In samples, yes. In masses, I don't know. What part of world do you think is most danger? In those regions where the Earth's crust has been weakened by oil production, or mining, or by natural causes, as in case of the Carlsbad Caverns, where millions of tons of limestone have been eaten away to form those caverns. In other words, the element is pushing to the surface wherever gravity has been not used. Exactly. How close my assistant had come to the truth. When she said it was almost as if the Earth were striking back for the way we had robbed her of her natural resources. Calling field unit eight, Horton to Conway. Field unit eight, calling field unit eight, Horton to Conway. Conway to Martin, over to you, Ellis. Dave, we've had a cave in. Hutch is trapped below. We're doing everything we can to dig her out, but we need more help. Is she hurt? Sounds okay on the intercom, but I'm afraid she might run out of oxygen down there. I'll be there with help as quick as I can, Ellis. Let's go. Okay, lower away. Hutch, help is on the way down. We want you to keep from moving. Conserve all the oxygen you can. The pressure photometer reads two with an R wave of 0.6, a G wave of 0.9. Stop talking. Save your strength. There's nothing to worry about yet, but there may be an increase. I'll keep you posted. Brave girl. I'm going down. you know as soon as I complete my computations. It may take until morning to break through down there. You better keep that line open. Is the earthquake coming? Yes. We'll be sending out an earthquake warning. Keep this line free. Right. The operator's hold. Must be another big one. It is. It'll be rough down there if we can't get her out in time. What do you mean? The center of this quake is practically under our feet. Watch it. Come back. Come on. Dr. Morton, I've got an increase in pressure. 64 on the quartz tube.
morning, Dr. Conway. Morning. Hello, Hutch. Hello. How is she this morning, Doctor? I'm discharging her complete recovery. The future, young lady, is yours. Take good care of her. Well, the future can wait. Here's a little something for right now. What is it? Open it. Perfume. My favorite kind. How did you know? That's my business. Come on. OK. I went into your suitcase, saw another bottle just like it. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. A little unethical, but very nice. Here, smell. Mm -hmm. Would you like to try some? Uh, thank you. No. <laughs> you know, I'm ashamed of myself, Hutch. How long have you been working for us? Forever. You know, in all that time, I've never bought you a gift, except at Christmas. Well, you were too busy thinking of other things. That's the trouble. So busy thinking of other things, concentrating on the future that the present just slipped by. You know, it's a funny thing. I've never had a present. Nobody has. Why not? Why must people be blind to everything around them? Is the future any better than the present? They eat their food and don't taste it. See people, never stop to appreciate them. Why must everyone postpone living? You still haven't found a way to stop the earthquakes, have you? Now, who brought that up? You did. You're saying, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we may die. Maybe I'm saying that. There's a quake every day now, each one worse than the last. It's only a matter of time till we come to the end. You really believe that? I don't want to. We've taken this old world for granted so long, it's almost inconceivable that it would cease to exist. But I can't close my eyes to the truth. Is there any way of guessing how much time we have left? With the help of the Datatron. The electric brain. Mm -hmm. We've converted everything we know about element 112 into an equation. We're ready to try it. Have you alerted the electrodata people? They've cleared the machine for our priority. Well, give me five minutes. I'll go with you. On May 16th in Pasadena, California, a machine, one of the marvels of our age, was being prepared to think. First, the basic laws of geophysics were impressed on its memory banks, a device almost as complicated as the human brain. Then it was fed the facts and the figures, everything that science had learned about element 112. Here it comes. Nobody could state for certain that the Datatron was infallible, but in dozens of public demonstrations, it had analyzed the data presented to it and made incredibly accurate predictions. Finally, it was ready to be asked the most important question in the history of our planet. I didn't think it would come so soon. Twenty-eight days and four hours. Only four weeks to live. It doesn't seem possible. Let me caution you, though. Computation isn't infallible. We fed the machine all of its data, and there's always the possibility of human error. There must be something that can be done. There may be one chance that the world is willing and quick. And what's that? Flood every area where the Earth's surface has been weakened. Replace lost gravity with water. Inactivate element 112 before it can expand any further. But there are some areas we could never reach with water. We can. But it'll take the cooperation of the entire world and the greatest engineering brains. We have 28 days to prove that mankind can unite. If we can't, perhaps we don't deserve to live. Red tape was junk. 18 hours later, bombs were released over designated areas, moving Earth on a titanic scale and creating new riverbeds overnight that would otherwise have taken years to construct. To fill those riverbeds, rainmakers seeded the clouds with dry ice. How are we doing, sir? 
It's hard to tell at this distance. I know we're getting our target, though. It's directly downwind from us. The test plane's reporting, sir. Conway speaking. Over. Flight X-45 reporting. Dr. Conway, you read me. Not very well. There seems to be a lot of static interference. Over. Can't help it. We're flying in a downpour. What a beautiful sight. Over. That's our first big break, and we love you for it. Signing off now. Rain was produced in the driest areas, collected in watersheds, and channeled to the danger spots. The common foe was element 112. 38.9, Dr. Conway. 38.9. Increase 39.1. Okay, how many? Another one. Area 4. Area 4 is going to evacuate. Hey, you got that? Hello, that's. Hi. Dr. Chuck Jenkins? I wanted to pray. Wanted to? Be with other people, not by myself. It was nothing but rioting in every church. People fighting to get in. I couldn't make it. I'd pray by myself. What's the latest? Still flooding all areas. Brought the family, Dave. I wanted us all to be together. Of course. Daddy says we're going to the show tomorrow. Did you come, Uncle Dave? Sure, honey. We'll all go. Come on, baby. Check the whole area. Why don't you have Brad come here? It isn't necessary. If the worst is going to happen, you should be with him. Uh, in the rule book, it uh, says you're supposed to be with the man you love. Well? Well? What do you want from me with the world collapsing? Maidenly reticence? I tried to tell you how I felt about you that day at the hospital. I was ranting about people being blind to everything around them. But I thought there was Brad. I know. Now it may be too late to make up for it. I hope it isn't, Hutch. I hope it isn't. Europe's coming in over the TV cable. One of our lowest districts started to tilt, but we now have the situation under control. What did you do, sir? Mm, what we always do when one of our low countries is threatened. We opened the dikes and led in the North Sea. Reporting from Hokkaido, Japan. Province of Hokkaido shaken by severe earthquakes. Tidal wave borrowed. Element 112 in control. Province Hokkaido now flooded. That is all. Japan's holding. Here's a report from Greece. Severe shocks have occurred in Thessalia. A new island is rising in the Aegean Sea. Here in Athens, we have had minor quakes with warning symptoms. Ellis, what do you know about Los Arenas, Nevada? Why, it's a little town in the Soledad Valley. Was that region ever watered down? No, it's one of the driest spots on Earth. What's happening up there? Danger signs. Ground heating up. All vegetation dying. Dr. Conway, on the phone, please. Priority one. Who is it? It's Sheriff Quinn at Los Arenas, Nevada. Hello, Conway speaking. There's a new mountain coming up right in our own backyard. As a matter of fact, if I wasn't afraid that you'd think I was losing my marbles, I'd say it was a, a volcano. We'll have to flood that area. Evacuate your people. They've already taken care of that themselves. 
All right. Our planes will start rain-making within the hour. There isn't a cloud in the sky. Hello? Sheriff Quinn? Sheriff Quinn! Okay. Line went dead. Hello, Sheriff Quinn? Who? Priority one. Put him on. Superintendent to Horseshoe Dam. Hello, Conway speaking. Dr. Conway, that new mountain at Las Serenas <coughs> is now an active volcano. Just a minute. Give me a plane, quick. Right. All right. Now give me the details. Explosions that size could only be caused by element 112. Captain, could you take us down to the edge of that cauliflower cloud? Right. Sulfuretted hydrogen, which is far worse. General, would you order the gates of Horseshoe Dam open? And if it doesn't work, we won't be around to try anything else. Contact Horseshoe Dam. Superintendent Wall. Yes, sir. HSHQ Horseshoe Dam. This is MDCX. Over. HSHQ. HSHQ Horseshoe Dam. This is MDCX. Over. HSHQ Horseshoe Dam. This is MDCX. Over. Whoever you are, keep away from here. We're all dead or dying. It's the gas from the volcano. The man's dying, sir. He says everybody else at the dam is already dead. It's the gas from a volcano cloud. Try to get him back. It's no use, sir. Conway, if there's nobody alive up there to open those flood gates. Destroy the dam. Bomb it. Ordinary bombing won't do it. Get blowed up. If we can get to the generators without being suffocated. But first, I want to talk to Los Angeles. This is Hutch. Over. How are you, Hutch? All right, Dave. All right so far. What's the general situation? More quakes reported. The land masses are holding. The only emergence of E-112 seems to be La Serena's Nevada. Over. Now listen carefully. There's a chance to control it by taking a terrific gamble. I'll need all of the E-112 we brought out of the pit for research. I want Dr. Martin to fly up here with it as fast as possible. Get right on it. Goodbye, Dave. Dr. Conway wants me to fly to Las Arenas immediately. All right, Hutch. Take good care of him, Mrs. Morton. I will, Hutch. Hutch, what are you doing here? I came instead of Dr. Morton. His family needed him. You shouldn't have done it. It was just a simple matter of transporting the element. There's more to it than that. Take another look at that container. We've got to carry it to the deepest level of Horseshoe Dam. There's nobody alive to lend us a hand. You couldn't even lift one end of it. I'll help you, Toto Doc. Thanks, Sheriff, but it's very dangerous. It's dangerous living nowadays. OK, boys, load that stuff on the copter. When do we start? Hutch, I can't let you go. You can't leave him behind. I've been with you from the start, and I'm going to stick with you right to the very end. Come on. to the generators, if possible. Yes, sir. How's 
the air, Sheriff. The thing's all right. Here, you take this. Need any more help, sir? No, thanks. Just keep that motor going. Ready for a fast takeoff. What time do you have, Hutch? 11.38. Why? I mean, I'll get away. That's all. They're all dead or dying. Which way? The stairs. Not right away. A few hundred years, perhaps. Element 112 will be cropping up again. Unless man finds a way of conquering it for good. 
I have great faith in man's genius. That's the way he's constituted. Crisis always brings out the best in him. You're wonderful. Really wonderful. I spoke too soon. The earth just started trembling again.